Hey, hey, Lazarus, claiming the Ascension Trinity, breaking the father myth with my bestie, Jane Evershed. And today's um, conversation is really looking to reshape our understanding of spirituality and consciousness. Um, so essentially exploring the prevalence of certain spiritual narratives like the father-son paradigm. And this investigation seeks to uncover how ancient symbols and teachings have been altered to advance specific agendas, restricting us into a very narrow uh, world viewpoint. Now, we'll decode uh, the enigmatic symbolism behind some of the most revered religious icons and uncover the deliberate omission of the feminine divine from our sec uh, spiritual uh, lexicon. Uh, and this exploration is not just about satisfying historical curiosity. It's about recognizing how these distortions have shaped our current so-called reality and continue influencing our lives. Um, Jane Evershed, as uh, you will well know, is our resident uh, researcher, artist, and fellow at the New Earth University, who's guiding us here through her groundbreaking research. And with her deep insights and creative perspective, uh, Jane will introduce a more balanced spiritual model that integrates both masculine and feminine principles and an organic trinity that offers a powerful framework for now creating the new earth truly and it, in a sense this could not be a more important uh, topic for us to be narrowing focus on as we see the cascading um effects of the auto demolition of the status quo to say, which is to say the, the fall of the patriarchy, so clearly, palpably, viscerally happening in all of our lives. What does that mean? What does that cascade uh, collapse of the patriarchy signify in real terms? So very much as we'll discover in this conversation. Jane, really happy to have you back up. It's always wonderful to be here, Sasha. I'm excited to share this today. Now, can you introduce us to your friend uh, over your left shoulder? Because he or she <laughs> looks pretty ferocious, but I'm not going to mess with them. Not going to mess with them. <laughs> well, this is the Omo being, and it was inspired by the people that live in the Omo River Basin in Ethiopia, I believe. And they dress up using all the natural plants of the area, and they have until recently, until plastic started getting there. And they just dress up with all these beautiful vines and horns and everything from nature. It's like a veritable fashion show, but it's totally organic. And they so finally, them. finally, we get where your your fashion your fashion um, incentive and inspiration. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> all right, good. So let's. Let's crack on. Uh, you are um, going to be doing another one of your fantastic presentations. Um, and just before you kick off, we're, we're really source coding this conversation, this segment in what we're loosely calling the lie, the great deception, exposing the false light trinity, which is to say, reviewing the hidden meaning behind the all pervasive theme of the father of the son in the trinity so um over to you thank you sasha so in order to manifest the new earth as you said we need to understand the power of the trinity so that we can use this ancient coding for the angelic human mission to 5d so that is what this journey will take us through and then we'll reveal the trinity of pure consciousness as the only trinity coding for creating the new earth. And then, as you said, too, I'm going to go on to reveal all the deceptions behind the false trinity. So this is what we all know as a representation of the trinity. And they've shoved this father-son trinity so far down our spiritual throats that we have acute spiritual indigestion and especially regarding the source of creation. But the biggest question to ask is where is the mother? And even here in this painting representing the Trinity, you can see the subliminal suggestion of children being directly depicted as the offspring of the father and son, which is what absolutely what they're up to today. And in the next slide, you'll see I've painted in the mother and you'll see that 
it looks right now. And even the children in the painting are around the mother. So I believe that the mother was actually painted out of this. So we have to ask ourselves why this mother was surgically removed from all existence, why she was banished from the Trinity, because we all know humanity dies without the mother. And the feminine represents sound, and sound came even before light. So we also know that creation originates with the masculine and feminine electric and magnetic organic coupling to produce matter. So the point of this is that we need to correct this model of the Trinity. So you'll see later, I think I've found the hidden one. And I've got them side by side here so you can see they've, they've replaced the mother with the round ball earth the one that they wanted to control and take over because, you know, the church and, and all their buddies knew that the mother represented the earth who the fallen angels wanted to conquer above all else. So, you know, eventually humanity has come now to succumb to the acceptance of reproduction outside of the uterus and many other abominations associated with human augmentation. So this is definitely a Renaissance reset piece. And it even looks like the mother was removed, as you can see clearly. So let's move on now. And I really need to put this disclaimer alert in. I'm really sorry, but people get very upset and angry sometimes. And I just want to let them know, good Christian people, that this is nothing against them or their beliefs. Very important. So here we see an actual trinity with a mother in it. And um, I don't know if you know this, but that fish symbol was actually a symbol of the feminine vulva. So that shows that at one time the feminine was highly regarded until it was removed. And the only reason they kept women around or even have women on the planet is for breeding purposes. And even still today, the agenda is about phasing out women. You know, so we know that at one time women were revered, but today with the transhumanist, posthumanist, and transgender agenda, it's all about phasing out women. And here we can see clearly in this incoherent shield of the Trinity, which has been used since the high Middle Ages, that if God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then there are three gods. So the interesting point about this is that the Trinity is originally a pagan concept, and throughout the ancient world, as far back as even Babylonia, they worshipped pagan gods and fallen gods grouped in threes. So to me, this could represent that their real gods represented their own satanic fallen gods or deities. See, how can God be one and, and be the father, and then but there's three of them? So it's really sad that this theory is sold to innocent churchgoers as the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because I honestly believe it's Satan. It's a, it's a satanic trinity. And here I put kind of like a joke in parentheses. Don't be fooled by the previous painting. Again, photoshopping in the action truth of who they were really worshipping here, all types of subhuman hybrids with an eye on this part of the cosmos and they were waging war to gain entry and influence on the earth through the power of the church and I'm sure most people have even heard of that by now if they've um... so here we have the equanimous tr trinity model so this is what the true trinity for this dimension should look like because equanim equanimity, equanim I'm sorry, I have trouble with that equanimity, word. Dear. <laughs> equanimity is believed to be the highest state of mind born of mindfulness, wisdom, and the eradication of ego-centered desires. And equanimity represents emotional intelligence, logic, and discernment in the creation process so therefore the universe in the act of creation discards ego because it would introduce a distortion into the divine morphogenetic field without equanimity there would be no universe 
The Trinity has been used as a model for creation since the beginning of linear time, all the way down to the nanoparticle level. But all of this has been kept hidden until recently, as you will see. And of course, we have to bring in the First Council of Nicaea here. And interestingly, the word Trinity appears nowhere in the Bible, but the concept of the Trinity was finalized at the First Council of Nicaea in 325 BC. Um, it wasn't 325 BC, it was um, AD. Oh, sorry, AD. Yes, corrected. Thank you. No problem. And this was after years of debate. So the true spirituality of the Cathars and such was usurped and used as a global psychological operation along with all other religions on earth. And incidentally, there were two groups of off-worlder invaders that each separately worshipped Lucifer and, Lucifer and Satan. So here at the Council of Nicaea, is where Satan and Lucifer were conveniently combined into one. So now we're just going to go through a little bit of their dirty laundry before we get to the ultimate trinity of the multiverse. So the trinity do doctrine we know is the pillar of all of Christendom, and the off-world invaders needed our creative energy to feed off and once ascended, then they can no longer feed off us. We will no longer serve as fodder. So most Christian churches teach and believe the doctrine of God is co-equal, co-eternal, la, 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 three-in-one triune Godhead, and that Jesus Christ is God and the Trinity is the cornerstone of Christianity. Just as the leaders of ancient Babylon had great power over the people, the Catholic religion and all its institutions have had just as much power over the masses today. And then here we see the divine feminine is missing. That's the biggest problem with this trinity. We have to remember that. It's devoid of feminine frequency. And God is contained in a closed system. And it starts out with the authoritative father, superior entity, plasma being. And then it drops down to the son, who is a lesser entity, corporeal entity, and beholden to the Father, which makes it hierarchical. Yeah. And then in my mind, the Holy Ghost is the combined consciousness of the other two entities, whoever they are, manifesting a third entity embodying spirit body. And here you can see it even more clearly where God is cordoned off right in the middle there. There's no God within and God without. And you see that the supreme authority of the Father has been completely usurped by the Roman Catholic Church. And they have their crucified son representing sacrifice and redemption, which is us being the sinful hordes filled with guilt and shame. And the funny thing about that is it's coming to the surface that Christ was actually never crucified. And that was all a big lie and a story too. Oh, yeah. And then the Holy Spirit is presence and guidance. And to me, that translates into surveillance and control. And today we are literally having plasma infusions of mRNA in, put into our bodies. So you can see how it's used at, for an agenda. And now here we have the magnificent, it's actually called the magnificent seal of the Holy Trinity. And you can see how, without a doubt, hidden in plain sight, there's that ram that they worship, that yeah. satanic being, very clear as day. Baphomet. And the Trinity code that they use, the way they use it is they get entity A plus entity B equals entity C, and the Holy Ghost is the agenda of the desired outcome. And you'll see I've made some some trinities based on real life things that have happened where this is absolutely proven. Very good. Very good. And then I don't think anybody, I've never read about this before, but I suddenly realized that the patriarchal trinity 
that means they they're calling them persons the father the son and the holy spirit so then they can be legally manipulated and god there is in the middle residing in solitary confinement under a religious and and they've play, placed God itself within the bounds. Here, I see it as placing God within the bounds of even Unum Sanctum. And those, the colors on there, the red, the blue, and the yellow, they represent the three, six, nine, and 12, which are the numbers of the universe. So the coding of this goes really, really deep, which is probably why they call it the magnificent seal. So it seems to own the universal rights to the word Trinity. And it means that by law, by the laws of free will too, they come in, this comes into it as well. They can manipulate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost to their own specifications because persons are actually charged with duties. So that's very interesting when you look at the law part of it. Now, here's my proof that they love using trinities. They actually called the test bomb the trinity, and its code name was Gadget. And we've all heard of Ye Gads, which is a shortened form of God. My God. Yeah. Yes. So the, when you look at Gadget, it means get God. And when, you, when I looked at the gematria surrounding this, the Trinity bomb was dropped 7-7-1945, and in Jewish gematria, that boils down to 771, which equals the Antichrist Manifesto. Then we drop down to the left, and you'll see the sun, which is they called little boy. So there's That's the right. sun. That was the one they dropped on Hiroshima. Now that one they dropped August 6, 1945, and the gematria is 861. It comes to King Zeus, God of War. Good heavens. Good heavens. Then the satanic ghost of death and destruction would be fat, fat man. But if you take the F off, you've got Atman. And we all know that Atman is a Hindu for the Christ consciousness. And if you look at the gematria of the date that that was dropped, you get 891 and it says, I am the devil. So there's no question in my mind. Also, the monument to destruction is one of the obelisk triangular things. And you'll see how this links in later on to the Pope further on in the story. So now when Oppenheimer said that now I am become death, the, the destroyer of worlds, it was a direct quote from the Bhagavad Gita because Hinduism, it literally translates into world-destroying time. So they're always bringing in these spiritual spiritual elements from other areas to, to plaster up against all their beliefs and invert them. And the bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima were like black magic. Mm -hmm. And they were symbolic actions of, of this satanic death cult that we live under. And they created this, and soon after all this happened, they brought out the CIA, and so we have perpetual war ever since. So you'll see here, you can see how this materialized and is proof that there's a direct connection between the death cult, Trinity, and Roman Catholic Church, because inside this building, which is the Pope Paul VI audience hall, there's a sculpture titled Resurrection, and it's said to be inspired by the violence and chaos of the 1945 nuclear bombing of Hiroshima, Japan. And the truth is that this sculpture is a celebration of the death cult immortalized in metal. Without any question of doubt. And they explain it all the way by saying it's depicting a nuclear explosion that represents a powerful testimony of christ's victory but you know right. it's not that right and, and, that, and that, that that's before we even see the skull sideways skull of the serpent anunnaki serpent or reptile overlord at the top masquerading as christ's hair blowing in the wind 
Oh, I hadn't seen that one before. Oh, no, you have to focus. That is a, a, a perfect depiction of a snake's skull. Wow. Because here is this the pit of the belly of the beast. And the thing is, another thing that they've taken and used and inverted is Christ consciousness tells us that where two or more are gathered in my name, there shall I be. And they use this hall to summon the demonic from within the belly of the serpent. Everyone by now knows this is a depiction of a, inside of a snake's skull. So these great meetings they have in these halls of their demons and sum, summonsing them. And even the word Vatican means divine serpent. And interestingly, too, this serpent building was constructed or it was it was constructed on land that was donated by the Knights of Columbus. So this is the main reason to me why they keep humanity separated and distracted so that we can never collude against them. And this is the power of unity consciousness denied. So here we have my equanimous equanimous trinity model the co-creation partnership with the open system so i just wanted to bring this back again and remind people what it really should like should look like because we, we always hear about equality and equity and all of this stuff but we never hear about equanimity equanimity and equanimity is believed to be the highest state of mind as i said before so this is the model we should be going on Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring it back briefly so you can see the contrast of what we've been living under and what we can do ourselves, what we can create. Now, here is a very interesting part of it because you can take that same model and use it as the true trinity for the earth plane, like it's, its cosmic location by saying that the ether is the father and earther is the mother. And between them, they create divine co-creation and from them between them between the earth and the ether is water air and fire which is basically our holy spirit and human beings are made of the residue of fire is carbon mostly of water and oxygen with just a few trace elements thrown in between there so this is what we've got this is for all of matter that is on earth and this is there's a father and a mother, and it's absolutely perfect. But wouldn't you know it, right? Ether was removed from the periodic table. It doesn't say that here, but it was in 1908, I believe. Mm -hmm. So this is how they tried to hide this natural trinity. Yeah, 1908, it was it was removed. And going back as far as 570 BC, we've got Pythagoras and Plato believing in the idea or the existence of four elements that began all things, and they called them land, water, fire, and air, but they were considered separate elements from our divine selves. And Pythagoras failed to recognize the earth as mother by calling it land. And whether this was intentional or not, I have no idea. But it was actually Aristotle in the 4th century BC that claimed that the ether did exist and it was the fifth classical element, which he published in his papers, the physics papers. And he described it as an element lighter than air. So now we have that separation and that element lighter than air surrounds celestial bodies. And then again in Ayurveda, ether is the creative life force that gives drive and consciousness to existence. And that was 5,000 years ago that this Ayurvedic knowledge came into being. So you'll realize why this is so important in a minute. So, and also you may think that I'm, you know, I'm not just saying that earth and the ether are somehow madly in love with each other in order to make my theory fit this, right? It's scientifically proven that they are life partners and the ether is drawn to the magnetism of the earth 
and the earth rarely receives this electronic or electric energy pulse. And the gravitational suction of matter makes the ether uniformly descend at right angles over the face of the earth. And then earth's magnetic field in turn is generated deep within the earth's interior and extends out into space. And then between them, they have the air, water, and fire and all the elements that make up the periodic table from whence all matter originates. We can then determine from this that ether is truly our father who art in heaven. But along comes Einstein. And then all their um, Mickelson and Morley experiments and everything and it is actually called the most famous failed experiment in history because they could find no evidence of the ether they're like oh my god there's no ether and so um this this is interesting because it was right around the time of those resets you know yeah and and they wanted us to get rid of the ether because it <clears throat> you remember the Rothschild started financing education and all of that stuff and well, the whole Fabianist thing was kicking in. And and it's interesting too that this this experiment that oops, I went the wrong way. Um this experiment that um they did affected Einstein's theory of relativity too. It contributed substantially to Einstein's formulation. So, and, and the funny thing is they used the interferometer to measure it. And I thought that was just ridiculous, that, that name. So just a quick, quick back to this. So there's, there's every evidence that there is indeed ether and this trinity is a viable replacement for the Godfather spirit trinity. But this is just one of our cosmic specific coding. There's a primary trinity for the entire universe. So there's one more trinity that is the trinity of source for all life in the multiverse. And so that's why I'm calling this one the secondary trinity. And here we go back to the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and we're putting in Satan and the Antichrist. And then the consciousness that they create together would be like the fragmentation of the angelic human post-humanism feeding off creativity and transgender mutilations and that kind of thing. And all of this stuff comes from their geometry, which is beautiful and it looks very sacred, but it's, it's their standard parasitic sigil. And it's also Metatron is known as the flower, as the angel of the veil. And it's based on hex geometry or the number six, part of the false light geometry that includes the golden mean fibonacci spiral flower of life and all of these were created after the cathara grid was damaged about 300 billion years ago so now what am i talking about cathara grid and all this stuff well it was all in those cdt plates which were altered, of course. They've been hidden for a long time, but now they're coming out. People are, are seeing them, looking at them. Of course, Ashiana Dean heralded them in, uh, in, the, in the 90s, late 80s, 90s. And now people are starting to look at that much more closely. And it's really important that we understand these CDT plates at this point to, to get to the final trinity. So CDT stands for Cloister Dora Tura, and they're a set of 12 discs made of selenite quartz crystal, and they were created off-world in Sirius B, and they're holographic recording storage and transmission devices containing the evolutionary history of life throughout the universal time matrix. Just so you know, I... Um in the US a few weeks ago, I sat with three Intel uh, operatives uh, who told me that they know where, I don't know if they said they know where all the scans are, the, 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 the disks are, but they certainly know where, um, where, where uh, some of these disks are on terra firma. You must be speaking of Alex Ling? No. 
No, wow. I yeah, thought I this intelligence, had been... intelligence operatives. These are Intel people. Wow. Boy, I'd love to know where those are. Anyway, they hold massive amounts of data and it's encrypted electromagnetic scalar standing waveform. And they were sourced from the Cosmic Hall of Records. And they are the Maharata teachings of the universal Melchizedek lineages of the cosmic Christos. So that's why they're so important. And from here on, we'll be getting all our information from the understanding of what we've learned from the CDT plates. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing we have to do is we have to go and look at the Chris code versus the Metatron time tether of death. That's right. And we remember it, I put it in the satanic trinity. And so now we're looking at that. So we learn from these CDT plates that matter is realized through geomancy, which is simply put, it's magic that controls earth in a nutshell. And it can be used for dark or light. So, however, all organic reality emerges from and exists within a central source of creation that is commonly referenced to as spirit, source, God, or God's source. And guardian angel nations often refer to this central source of creation as the unisci, which means the eternal central point of all union. And this central creative source is the sentient creative identity in energy throughout the cosmos. So now that you know that, you know how big it is. And again, here we have the crystal lotus flower of life and the metatronic flower of death side by side. And you can see that the flower of life is always replenishing itself, but the metatronic yeah. flower is finite consciousness and it's a closed mm -hmm. source. So the God seed is imbued with the characteristics of consciousness possessed by the unisci. And this creates within itself smaller and smaller constructs of consciousness that reflect the structures set by the unisci and it's a process of exponential fractalization. So I guess until it boils down to you and me. And the God seed represents the source family of gestalt consciousness within which the levels of individuated identity have their being. And then obviously the metatronic so-called flower of life has none of these attributes and it cannot self-generate. And so therefore it needs to obtain its energy source from outside of itself. So and that's it, the great parasite. That's the parasite yes, complex. It has mm. to steal it. And we as a humanity have been trying to escape this time controlled matrix for millions of years at this point is what we learned from the CDT plates. And and, and here we are, it's all about time. You know, the current trinity represents everything that manifested as an opposite to the original divine principles in this time matrix. So using their dark magic, they created a new time construct whereby we had their timetable and calendars imposed upon us, effectively, <clears throat> effectively making our time run in a never-ending loop back to their beginning and starting all over again. So this is what happened and it trapped us in time. This is why we're trapped in time. And their Trinity is, it's one of the most iconic symbols for perpetuating the time matrix. And we've been exposed to it over many lifetimes. And if we are angelic humans, then we, we were most likely tortured, raped, burned, you know, burned at the stake, made to sacrifice a life in order to atone for our sins. Mm -hmm. So these lifetimes of trauma is what I think has created God-fearing Christians in these times. Yeah. Well, not just Christians, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, Buddhists, any monotheistic or cult religious um, adherence or devotionalism is generally backed up by by psycho-civilizational PTSD and incarnational PTSD, yeah. 
Sasha, you can all you always say everything so much better than I could ever say it. <laughs> well, no, it's just that you're just you're just triggered. What you said is entirely right. I mean, it's a difficult conversation to have with with loving Christians or loving Muslims or loving Buddhists or loving Hindus or loving anything, Zoroastrians or Adventists, uh, you know, Jehovah's Witness, as I've been speaking to in the last couple of days, some most beautiful souls who uh, their whole background uh, is is Jehovah's Witness, which is a form of, of Satanism and as is Mormonism. But having that conversation with people who are cult programmed generationally into those uh, devotional um, um, kind of landscapes of mind fuckery it's a very difficult conversation to have because they look at one another in their own communities and go hang on that's my uncle that's my aunt that's my mother my father my grandfather we're good people we know we're good people and indeed they are good people trapped inside the grand deception so, you know uh, as a community as, as a culture as a, as a faith and yeah breaking breaching that uh, dream spell becomes the overarching I mean, I'll give you an example. What you just showed there um, earlier, the um, uh, metatronic geometry. Oh, I adopted yeah. that. I adopted that as the as the earliest iteration of the New Earth um, logo years ago, ten years ago, eleven years ago, twelve years ago. Wow. I didn't understand. I didn't understand the the geometry particularly. And it was actually crew around me who said, oh, this is a very symbolic flower of life, seed of life. I'm like, what the fuck ever? I don't care. Okay. And allowed that to proliferate wow. for a wow. while as the logo of the founding logo of the New Earth. So it's no um, no surprise that the, the uh, force of pure truth just completely shed all of that geometry from the New Earth. Um, and I've been awakening as we all have, but you know, we adopt certain things. People wear crucifixes um, for, for good reason, you know, and yet not aware of the fact that they're playing into satanic ritualism and worse, death cult, black magic, you know, as you call it, dead man on a stick. Well, go into the heartland of middle America and say dead man on a stick in, in an evangelical <laughs> church, and I suggest you run like hell, you know. <laughs> right. backed up by good humans who become very, very zealous and very psycho-emotionally uh, addicted to their cultural framework, you know. You run like hell across the devotional landscape of mind fuckery, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> so in contrast, the divine coding of original source exists out of time. And it reveals the three unified fields of part to chi, part to k, and part to come. And I understand these are new words. Don't get railroaded by them. Just remember them because this is the real trinity, which is known as the triveca in the teachings from the CDT plates. And another thing about those people you were talking about, Sasha, they, they know like somewhere in the background there's this like, female divine something or other but nobody is ever being taught that this is crucial the feminine yeah. aspect of this is so crucial right. And, right. and 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 it's so hard to put it across because it's turned into something you know that we just see as almost nothing in the this day and age. Well, just to, just to remind this audience lazarus audience and you 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 remember me possibly having spoken on a couple of occasions about 20 years ago and i'll keep this very brief 20 over 20 years ago when i commissioned um a study from one of the top universities in the world uga in atlanta i i commissioned a study by the leading cultural anthropologist pretty much on the planet uh, professor D dr dejo benedict um all of the creation myth stories wanted to know what they were it took a year and we studied over 10,000 tribes all around the world and their genesis stories their creation myths um and discovered, and I, I, I was trying to break it down with the, with the study, what was the commonality? What was the singularity commonality in creation mythology in all the black skin, brown skin, red skin, yellow skin, tens of thousands of tribal nations uh, in the, since the inception of time that we're aware of in, 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 the, in the record? And the, all of them came down to one commonality, which was a grandmother spider in the middle of the eye of the Milky Way. That was the common pulse 
thread of all wow. lineage under academic um, study. Yeah. Wow. So it is a it is a female presence. It she weaves, baby. She weaves, and she's a grandmother spider. <laughs> Phylum arachnida. <laughs> so here is, and that's Eric need her. How can you see? Well, now you can see clearly that our adversaries had full knowledge and understanding of the power of the Triveca, and they mm -hmm. used this sacred geometry to create spells over the entire earth and its inhabitants in order to trap us here and feed off our divine creative energy. And this is again the example of, of how our the sacred flower of life always gives us the beautiful energy and is never ending. And I'll say a little bit more about that later. But it's just the self-regenerating divine sacred geometry of abundance. Yeah. And then here's the secondary satanic trinity that I threw in here, which shows there is no God. And the, the result of this trinity of Lucifer and Baphomet getting together, and this is the only time a female ever appears anywhere near a trinity of theirs because the Baphomet is half male and half female. And that is uh, represented by a lot of celebrities and royalty. And these two getting together, the consciousness that they create is the feeding off of human blood, human sacrifice, and mostly sexual deviancy. So well, that's, they, that's, a, that's a depiction of Moloch on the right there. Right. Well, you know, the sacrifices, I'm speaking about the sacrifices, but I just threw this in here because I want to show you now how they take it into the corporations. Here's the corporate trinity. So you have the corporation, which I call corpse operation or death operations. And the black black rock is the hybrid father. The corporeal government is the conduit son who delivers all this, you know, government mind control stuff out. And their Holy Spirit that they create is the supreme spirit of control through legal institutions, surveillance, wars, banking, synthetics, and medicine. And this is just one example. It can be done for any mission they deem necessary. Post-humanism, technology, the arts, which I've already worked on, academia, education, everything. And they're just recycling our human creative currency. So in the ultimate trinity of the Unisci, you don't have any of that in the equanimous trinity model. There's a primary model, and this is it, and it exists for the entire universe or Unisci. And it runs on the same principles, but it's so small you can't see it. Mm. The first thing that jumps out is the male-female balance, of course, which is the cornerstone of all divine creation. And particae are the smallest units of energy in the cosmos. You can mm -hmm. find 800 billion billion particae units in an average three-dimensional photon. Mm -hmm. And the particle, they're not just energy units, they're conscious identity units. And when they are grouped together, they form different types of consciousness. So it is the first of the six primary elements of the Chilontic sciences. And in the CD plates, the Chilontic sciences are the sciences of consciousness and creation. So no wonder we never heard about these damn CD right. right. Now, here I'm going to attempt to bring everything all together by making the statement that taking over the world is all about mass in physics and religion. Because here you can clearly see how they tried to mimic the sacred geometry with their Hadron Collider. collider. And they had to find the God particle before time ran out for them because the boson particle of god is described as a mass giving mechanism and the pope's addresses are also a mass giving mechanism and it's yeah. all tied to control of the masses and cern can only produce images of chaos and dissonance and they'll never produce harmony and balance and i 
feel like I could have saved them $13 billion. I could have, they could have just had a look at this and they could have found out that they're yeah, never yeah. going to get it, you know, because they're privy to all the secrets of the universe, but they cannot and they never will produce pure consciousness because they will never be able to access a frequency that can actually produce it. So, and interestingly enough, the Higgs boson is called the Holy Grail of physics. And you can see that crude imitation, those four circles, the top right one is a crude imitation of the eternal life lotus, which is the perpetual life source code. You see how yeah. far they got it off. And then yeah. at the yeah. bottom, there's another Higgs boson, which is also a crude imitation of the eternal life lotus. And you've got Peter Higgs peeking out from behind the curtain like he's in there controlling everything. And then you've got the artist who created the atomized bombing of Hiroshima. He says it is in that moment that the material world erupts and becomes atomized. Talk, talking about his nuclear bomb sculpture that memorializes Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So you see how it's all connected into science here. And here, the ultimate, it, it just looks like really bad cymatics, you know, when they freeze something and they've been playing rock music to it. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's what you get, right? Wow. Trying to wow. imitate the God source. And then that's what it actually, the, in the center, the true trinity is beautifully mm. revealed within the eternal life lotus. Mm which exists out of time. And then I just want everybody to have a visual of the Fibonacci spiral, the flower of life and the golden mean, because however beautiful these are, they're all false light constructs of the earth invaders. But the crystal... Yeah, you know, we've, we've sorry to interrupt you there. No. We've, uh, we've beaten this donkey to death with Lazarus, just so you know. Touch on it, but you don't need to weigh in because no, this audience knows... Absolutely, yeah. Dan Winter, you know, Dave Emery, we've gone into this at great length. So here's the ultimate trinity of the Unisci with the Particai mm. Particum. And as you say, you've been through all this, so I'll just go past this. No, no, part. not this, not this. Dwell on this a little. Well, when you impose the eternal lotus flower of life over the Triveca of the pure consciousness, trinity it's it it reveals the sacred geometry of the actual birth of all matter and and it's interesting here too we're talking again the female that we've always left out we've got to bring back in the female is sound and sound came before light so all that bs about coming from adam's rib and all that can go down the toilet and so now here is is our, our peace on earth trinity which is made up of you the co-creator in timelessness god the prime creator source and together we create unity consciousness in the organic matrix matrix yeah, that, works. that works so i know i'm i'm kind of stating the obvious here but when we're not creating harmonically as we were meant to do I think this is where sickness, boredom, pain, and longing, and regret, and all those low-frequency elements begin to invade our bodies when we fail to do this. Oh, you'd be you'd be describing the trial of separation there. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, here we have the organic matrix trinity for the new earth, and I've got it right next to the the particae, particum, particae, so that you can see I'm using this now as a template for angelic humans working with God's source to create the spirit of pure consciousness in their manifestation for a 5D new earth, implementing the eternal flower of life at the center of the Trinity for a five-dimensional existence. 
And very interestingly, um, when I heard that Max Planck had said that he regarded consciousness as a fundamental and he regarded matter as a derivative of consciousness, I looked at that and I said, then the question is not what is the matter with war? The question is what is the matter of peace? And so what we surround ourselves is what is going to create this peaceful environment. And you are somebody that is absolutely doing that to the nth degree. Are you sure about Max Planck or me? You. <laughs> <laughs> so the power of the ultimate trinity there is no God the Father, we can truly say that, and there is also no God the Mother because you can't attach gender to something so powerful. And the Christ consciousness is creator source and you are Christ consciousness and you are creation currency and actually God is whatever you imagine God to be. So if we desire the presence of peace and harmony in our realm, then it follows that through unity consciousness, we shall be able to summon that just as our adversaries have summoned the false light to reign among us. And that is the true power of the Trinity. We have to invoke the highest frequency presence of prime creator source through unity consciousness to dwell upon this plane because without our vital beingness, God cannot just appear out of nowhere and the God presence can only appear through the high frequencies that we emanate. So everybody get your, get your jiggy up. <laughs> Beautiful. And then finally, here is the new earth trinity. And obviously unity consciousness is front and center very hard to do very easy to talk about very hard to do but we're all learning we're doing our level best and so i am proposing this model for the five existence that's just around the corner here's the symbolism for it and we'll throw that god the father thing right out the window and into the trash very good. I love that. And absolutely correct. I mean, let me just say thank you for that. Absolutely beautiful, Jane. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Um, as, as you may know, I'm in Southern Africa right now. Yes. Uh, I'll be heading back in two days, back to the heartland of Europe. Um, but I've been here with uh, a science group who I deem to be the most advanced science group in the world that I have yet met. Um, and I've been at this for a quarter of a century. Um, and this group have developed um, what you would loosely coin medbed technology. And I've been witnessing it. I've been in it twice. Te wow. Today was my second time. Um, I'm allowed to film uh, much of what I'm seeing, almost everything. Um, they, this, and I'm pretty much staying in a facility behind razor wire and, and electric fences. Uh, with cheetahs and dogs guarding over there. It's in the middle of a cheetah sanctuary in the Bundu. Wow. It's just so amazing. Bottom line is um, speaking and today spending about three or four hours with the chief scientist and his um, second in command uh, for three and a half, four hours, a protracted lunch in, in, in Stellenbosch in one of these great, beautiful, old colonial um, yep. buildings. In, in a grand um, uh, winery, talking at length about advanced plasma physics. We were talking about, I, interestingly enough, handed um, the professor the 5G BioShield. We had a, 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 one of the prototypes, with a, one, of the, one of the models with us, small one, handed it to him, and he almost passed out touching it. He immediately threw it down on the table and said, what the hell is this? Um, incredibly sensitive, psychic um, individual and very clairvoyant and psychic and empathic as well as being a savant and a very brilliant scientist and engineer. He's developed a new physics that is going to, in my view now, uh, going to transform the world. The entire world will be transformed through what I've seen in the last seven days in Africa. 
Um, and these people are very sophisticated. This is not a little um, operation that's looking for funding or, you know, they, they <laughs> are a big game and yeah. they are not meant, they are not controlled by the military intelligence community, although there are very serious military intelligence um, uh, elements watching very closely and protecting actually what's going on. I, I, I don't want to speak too much on that level because I don't have an authorization. But I'll say this, that um, the conversations with this chief scientist um, have, were essentially always con convening or converging into the theme of what you've just alluded to. Oh, you've taken off your, your, your um, you've taken off your. Uh, yeah, I can pick uh, back up if you want. Yes. I was, I was going to be very cleverly jump back and refer to the plate. Oh. So there we, there we go. Yeah. So when you talk about the, when you talk about the God, the angelic human and new earth, curiously enough, that's exactly what was the culmination of our last week's conversations, philosophizing, exchanging ideas, because we're looking to see where the convergence is between this technology group and the new earth metric and what we're doing. And certainly what we're about to launch um, next week at the Lazarus Symposium, which is the golden ticket toward the first micronation. And we plan to syndicate and franchise the micronations all around the world. Now, we're not ready. We weren't ready when I launched the new earth in 2013 we weren't ready now we are 11 years later the point is um isn't it beautiful that i'm spending a week here with a man who i deem to be the most advanced savant <laughs> physicist scientist practical <laughs> manifesting stuff making building in state-of-the-art 007 laboratories and his life philosophy living philosophy is exactly and scientific philosophy confluences perfectly what you've just said that it's yeah. about the alpha omega it's yeah. about the angelic human and it's about what we now manifest as the new earth absolutely i got chills i got chills because i am no scientist but i always feel it's my duty to put this information across in a way that somebody could completely understand it and slowly build up away from what we've been used to in order to discard that coat that we've been wearing and put on yeah. the new mantle for this time. And I'm, I'm really honored and, and, but not that surprised that that's the final conclusion they came to because you can never get beyond the God seed and God source. Yeah. There's no beyond that. Yeah, yeah, and again, that the the prevailing the prevailing undercurrent there being uh, the resurrection of the eternal mother. Yeah, and which 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 surfaces with the resurrection of the ancestral blood song, which is all of the noise, the white noise of our. Um, ancestries of our lineages of our bloodlines from inception and and not just the blood element but blood is simply a carrier of soul and of memory so whatever it is that cascades to the present so-called time which curiously enough is timelessness carries through the blood and so the resurrection of the ancestral blood song which is to say the reckoning that each of us need to do in honor with the traumas and the stresses um, and the um, whatever is messaged in the blood needs to be reckoned with by you and I in the here and now. Each of us, every single soul has to do that. You can't find enlightenment until you have absolved self and done the reckoning with that ancestral blood song. You have to deal with it. And once you've done that and forgiven the mother and the father and all the rest of it, entered into the vector of the now space, as my beloved friend uh, Russell J. Gould, <laughs> chief judge of the world and U.S. postmaster general would, would, would have it, uh, the now space is, is critical. And then the resurrection of the eternal mother issues off that and does the healing, the absolving, and the forgiving. 
and um, and there we stand thereafter naked uh, as little um, angelic humans now fully resurrected to our true <laughs> status, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I feel like I had to take my talking stick directly to God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, very good, very good. Well, look, this is very beautiful. Um, I, I think we've pretty much wrapped it. I, I love the fact that you um, were able to conduct this entire talk um, with imagery, and I'm very grateful to you because um, it helps me a great deal as well. Now, I don't feel that I have any questions to ask because I think you covered the full ambit of this subject, but is there anything else you wanted to touch on? I would say that people need to start looking at their galactic history if they really want to get a perspective on what really happened. That would be a good place to start. And it seems overwhelming at first, but you, there's lots of people who are spelling it out really well for everyone so that we can familiarize ourselves with our galactic history that we've never been taught in order to bring everything into perspective up and function using our God-given creative currency in order to create this new world that is just around the corner when the release of all these new previously shelved inventions and technologies are let loose into humanity because we're going to be levitating all over the place and we're going to be having so much fun and we've got to be ready for that. Beautiful. Beautifully stated. Love it. Love it. Couldn't agree more. All right, darling. Thank you so very much. And um, where do we take the conversation forward in as far as you're concerned with your beautiful researchers? You know, Sasha, I've been buried in my neck up to here in this for like three weeks. So I never, ever got beyond God's source. And I don't know what is beyond God's source. So okay, I'll very go good. back home and rack my brains. <laughs> good girl. All right. Well, darling, I'm very, very grateful to you. And thank you for joining us on Lazarus today. Thank you. Bye, Sasha.